Welcome listeners to Through the Sight Glass, a podcast that dives deep into the fascinating world of craft beer and celebrates the incredible individuals who shape its vibrant landscape. Join us on a journey where we explore the nuances of this amazing industry and the remarkable people who contribute to its richness and diversity. And today we get to sit down with Parker of Narrows Brewing. Parker, thank you for your time. Um, I know I just said your name, but you want to introduce yourself and your role here at Narrows? Yeah, my name is Parker Rush. I'm the one of the owners here with my fiance, soon to be wife, Lauren. Awesome. And I head up production. I'm the head brewer here. She does all of the important stuff of like making sure we're (laughs) profitable and paying our employees. So good. That's a solid partner. That's a good business strat. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We're we're a good team. We were a little nervous about it when we. I bought the business, and then she joined a little later. And you know, working with your spouse is can be challenging, but. Mm -hmm. um, there's like no greater joy than like building a business with her. It's yeah. it's actually kind of makes me yeah. nice. well up a little bit. It's, uh, it's really cool. I, awesome. I love it. That's awesome. I mean, we understand. We're married. Yeah. 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 Married. Yeah. Lived in a van for four years. Yeah. And building we, start, we started together. doing this. And yeah, yeah, it is a challenge, it but is. it is great. It is great. You guys lived in a van together we for still, four years. We still, we still live, live in, in a van. With yeah. a cat, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's how we, Good for you guys. That's how we do the podcast. We're yeah. able to just travel around and meet up at the breweries and see the place and take pictures. And so, yeah. That's rad. Yeah. That's yeah. super cool. I'm really <laughs> jealous. Yeah. It is an added benefit. I mean, we've been living in it for four years. So I think now, like, traveling and working mm-hmm. has become so normal. But we don't see it from other people's perspectives mm-hmm. of, like, oh, you get to go meet, see these mm-hmm. people, see different, like, cultures and communities. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, I guess that is, like, pretty awesome. Yeah. 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 Living in 60 cool square life. feet is, you know, always a, a slight discomfort. Too. Yeah. But, sure. you know, <laughs> we're enjoying it. So, yeah, anyways. that's cool. All right, where do you call home? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Gig Harbor. Okay. Um, I've been here most of my life. Uh, we live in Fircrest now, but moved to Colorado for college. Oh, nice. And then... And then Davis for brewing school. So okay. I've spent a little bit of time outside of the Northwest, but... Um, in all gorgeous places, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where I, at in Colorado? I was at uh, CU Boulder. Okay, gotcha. Oh, that's very cool. Now, yeah. what did you go to school for? Um, I got a studio art degree okay. and economics. Very nice. Cool. Yeah. I was making big ceramic <laughs> sculptures. No, that's awesome. And There's learning a about lot, economics. We yeah, ran yeah. into a lot of artists. David oh, Obelisk yeah. is like fine art, graphic design. Yeah. Um, same with Trevor. Trevor, he, yeah, I did art. Like, yeah, him and, him and his wife are all like Bear studio Isle, design. They did a lot of stuff too. We yeah. worked with them. That's so. cool. Okay, I yeah. like this trend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. I've noticed that in craft beer, there's a lot of people. I mean, there's obviously the business side too, but mm-hmm. there's a Creatives. lot of people that are. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I... Not to sound too far up my own ass, but I think uh, making beer is art in Mm -hmm. some sense. And, like, there's a a huge part of it of being creative and, like, figuring out how to make a unique drink. Yeah. And it's easier to sell than sculpture. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. At least I found. (laughs) Moves a little bit quicker sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do you still do any sculpting or anything? Like, do you still do that on the side? I know you're probably busy with the new business, but... I want to. I I have on occasion, but um, ceramics is kind of hard to like just go do, do for an afternoon. Mm-hmm. That's true, especially you, when your job can go twelve to sixteen hours a yeah, day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the goal is to build out a studio at our house at okay. some point. But, oh, awesome! Yeah. Do, are any of your uh, if you have siblings, are any of them artistic uh, mm-hmm. in the arts? Uh, I have one sibling, my older sister Melissa. She lives um, over by Point Defiance. Okay, gotcha. Um, she. Used to have a writing business and like a creative writer, mm-hmm. and I know she has a novel that she hasn't oh. put out yet. Put out gotcha. yet? Okay. So who knows? Uh, yeah, I hope she does. But yeah. she's busy with a baby right now. Oh, that's, that's exciting. Like I'm getting writing blogs. It's it is a task, and yeah. it's also the most I've written probably mm-hmm. since college. Of being like, wow, like really having intention and thought, and then also not plugging everything into like Chat GPT yeah. and oh, just being like, like write, write this, this, even yes. for how tempting that is. It's like yeah. no got to got to earn your blood and sweat. For sure. What about your parents? What, do you, what is it like going with your parents and what do they do? Uh, my so my dad was a commercial fisherman for uh, quite a while. Oh dang. And um, and then he started a construction business in the South Sound mm-hmm. and he's been doing that for forever now. Forever. Yeah, construction. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, both really tough jobs. <laughs> yeah. Was it was it fishing here or up in Alaska, or would he go everywhere? No, he was uh, gillnetting for sockeye in Bristol Bay, which oh, okay. I also do. Nice. Um, oh, 
Oh. That's my other job. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This isn't keeping you busy enough? <laughs> no. So I leave, I'll leave. i be leaving in a couple weeks to oh, head up to Knack Nick okay. and go, go catch a bunch of salmon and then come back and make more beer. Oh, wow. That's how long are you going to be gone? Like, how long do those stints go? Uh, this year should only be about a month, okay. but some years it's two. Okay. Just okay, gotcha. depends on the run size and all of that. Yeah, yeah. So between four and eight weeks. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, like, keeping family tradition alive with that, that's awesome. Does your fiancé go fishing with you as well, or does... No. Oh. <laughs> she did She did for, like, three days last year, oh, okay. and that was enough. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I've got the exposure. I, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Cool. Before she flew up, I was like, just so you know, we just fish. Like, there's no other activity. Mm -hmm. It's just fishing mm -hmm. all day long. Yeah. She was like, yeah, that'll be fine, and then it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. So do you feel like some of the skill sets you learned in college, like how did that translate into you going to brewing school? Like what was that tra transition for you um, doing ceramics and economics and then wanting to go brew? That's, you know, pretty big step. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> honestly, there, there wasn't a ton of overlap. I graduated college and was still fishing and, but didn't really know what I wanted to do the rest of the year. And I started working at Lowercase uh, in Seattle, mm -hmm. tending oh, nice. bar back when they had a tap room. Um, and then when I got hired, I was like, but I want to work on the production side. And so finally, John Marty um, let me come back and he taught me a ton. And then I was like, okay, this is, this is really what I want to do mm -hmm. the rest of my life. Yeah, something lit inside you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's the, the endless possibilities of beer is just fascinating mm -hmm. to me. It's so much fun. Yeah. yeah what, what do you think is one of your favorite aspects about the endless possibilities of beer? Is it like the actual beer creation or is it seeing the people, like the community and the stuff that happens in the tap room? What is it for you? Uh, it, the creation side, like always getting to mess with new ingredients. They're always coming out with new hop varieties. Um, really excited about Vista right now. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, 003, the new public variety. We just got samples of. We're oh, excited to brew it. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's it's. You can buy it from one place, and it's but mm. they don't make very much of it right now. But they're hoping to plant more. Gotcha. What is it used for? Is it uh, bittering, dry hopping? It's a dry hopping. Okay, aroma gotcha. Hop. Um, I believe it's really high in linalool, so it. But I can't remember. Off the uh -huh. head. But gotcha. It it looks like a a promising one, and nice. it's public, so. Anyone can grow yeah, it, you're like, and yes. they can't squeeze you for more money yeah. for it because someone can just plant it. Yeah, and so I'm yeah I'm big on public hops. I think that's super important for the industry, and mm -hmm. um, I'm just kind of sick of seeing Citra, Mosaic, Simcoe, same. IPAs. Yeah. I yeah yeah yeah. There's about, endless I think, possibilities with all the new hops. Yeah, I think like totally. probably every. West Coast IPA, or even just like American IPA on the West Coast, probably has Citra, uh, Simcoe, Mosaic, Amarillo mm -hmm. in it. Like, yeah. and that's it's all the way through. So, and we're guilty of that too, yeah, right? Our West Coast great, IPA has, but it's nice those. to explore boundaries. Yeah, yeah for nice. sure. So after Davis, um, going to brew school, what were your next steps um, for your brewing career? So also really quick, um, was there a beer that you when you tried it, it's like, oh, I don't need to just drink Miller High Life. I would like mind drinking these other. Uh, other oh, yeah. offerings. Sorry, I jumped ahead. No, yeah. you're okay. Let's go back in time a little yes, bit. Yes, let's yeah. go um, back in time. Sorry, I jumped ahead. <laughs> no, you're okay. Uh, my parents were, for when me and my sister were young, they were like really into wine. And so at a young age, they would give us tastes mm -hmm. and be like, what do you think about this? Oh, nice. And so they started exposing us to like the flavor profile of alcohol in a, I think, a really healthy way. Mm -hmm. And we learned to appreciate that like it's not just for the intoxicant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's a benefit, but it's not, it's not all about that. Yeah. And then they started drinking a bunch of craft beer. And so, and that's that like at like 16, my dad was like, here, try this pyramid hef. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, yeah. this is way better than Bud Light. Yeah, yeah. that's a great one to start with too. A half of Isaac is great. Yeah. So uh, I think, I can't remember what birthday it was, like his 50th or 55th or something. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, the station you brew in Puyallup. Oh, okay. I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. And so I walked in, I was 16, I could drive and I mm -hmm. walked in and I was like, hey, I want to make a beer for my dad. And the oh, guy was cool. like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Oh, heck yeah. And so oh, I learned at a, at <laughs> yeah. a young age, yeah. it's not illegal to brew beer wort it's oh. illegal to pitch the yeast if oh, you're under 21 okay. so i yeah for his birthday i was like uh 
I have beer for you, <laughs> but you got to go pay for it and pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's a thoughtful gift. I would have never thought to have done that for... I didn't even know that law existed. Yeah. Yeah. I would have crazy. Never you We're not condoning like everybody to become a brewer, but if you want to, now you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like homebrew shops in college, we would we we weren't 21 yet, so mm -hmm. we were like, fuck it, we'll make our own. Yeah. And it was dog shit beer. Yeah. But <laughs> but you know, we were we were learning. Yeah. And, we're trying. Uh, yeah. Well, that's cool to see that you have this steeped at like an early age too. Yeah. yeah. The creative the creativeness and then actually doing it. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It was always like in the back of my head, but it felt like it just felt like such a ridiculous dream that like, you know, mm -hmm. you're never going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then and then so got back from Davis and um, the old owners of Narrows were, you know, family friends. And uh -huh. I was talking to my parents and they're like, you know, I think they'd sell to you. It was mid COVID. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was it? I think it was like a big ownership team here, too. I think it was yeah. like eight or ten people. Yeah. And they were all professionals and mm -hmm. they had better jobs yeah. honestly and mm -hmm. so yeah. there wasn't the brewery wasn't getting the the capital resources and the time and attention to mm -hmm. to like really make it to the next level and so I was able to get it for a reasonable price and nice it was, mm -hmm. it was all the money I had in the world but <laughs> and, <Here's my> and life. <laughs> loans and everything yeah. were you with your fiance at this time uh we had just met oh, okay actually. cool wow. Yeah. So it wasn't like it was a big of a bobshell to be like, oh, by the way, I took all my money and I'm going to own this brewery. No, she had she had plenty of time to get out okay. if yeah. she thought this was a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> That's right. funny. That's, wild. That's good. Yeah. So you bought, building. how long had the business been open whenever you purchased, like around COVID? Seven years. Seven years? Okay. Um, if that math, yeah, seven years. It opened in 2013 mm -hmm. and I bought it officially closed like November 1st of 2020. Okay. Wow. And yeah, so we've been doing it for three and a half years now. Nice. We things seem to be going well. Mm -hmm. um, oh no, we both. <laughs> yeah, we both agree. We both love it. Yeah, the goza is awesome, and we'll get nice. to talking about beer. But yeah, yeah it was a weird. Uh, I think craft beers had a weird, funky time in the past, like five to eight years. Mm -hmm. And it's not a knock on any breweries out here in Tacoma, but I think there was a weird struggle for, I think, good quality and control. And it always felt like, oh, you had to be as big as Fremont or some of these and places to achieve that. Yeah. But now we have all these resources and knowledge, but I also think practices that people have learned elsewhere where it's like, no, you can produce it on a much smaller scale. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that that's the the joy of it, too, is like, how do we tweak it just a little bit? How do we make it just a little bit better each time and mm -hmm. and not have something go wrong mm -hmm. in the process? Like yeah. not have someone forget to sanitize something or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and that is a challenge, right? Like making sure everyone's following the same steps mm -hmm. every time. SOPs. Yeah, <laughs> SOPs. Yeah. And uh, ev everyone wants to put their own twist on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah. Like, no, <laughs> we're not doing yeah. it that way. Yeah. 100%. Definitely. That's so wild. Yeah. So whenever you got the business, what were some of the first things? Like, I'm sure you came here a lot since your dad was one of the owners. So, like, what whenever you came into it, like, what was some of your first set of goals that you were wanting to achieve? Um, get get the consistency right mm -hmm. and, and figure out, like, where the misses were in the market. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like we were making – just one style. We were making a lot of hazy IPAs at that time, mm -hmm. and it really needed to. We needed to be more welcoming to like any style of beer drinker, mm -hmm. and it was like if you if you didn't like double dry hopped hazy IPAs, this place wasn't for you, mm -hmm. and and that was just not the the environment I was looking for. Right. Um, you know, I I like making all kinds of beer, and I also want to sell beer mm -hmm. to yeah. everyone you know <laughs> it's like if you if you alienate a section of the consumer base mm -hmm. that's that just hurts us right. you know yeah. so it's like a knife edge to pick one lane and be mm -hmm. like this is what we're going to do and there's a few breweries that i think it works for but especially mm -hmm. for longevity you have to branch out and yeah. you have to be good at everything and then the yeah. area you're in too like i feel like this is a lot of people think they know craft beer mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of room for growth here in Tacoma, and so I think you definitely found that niche for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. We have a little bit of a history with uh, Narrows because Austin used to work here. Um, yeah, back used to in the beer day. ten. Beer ten. Loved it when people ordered the plank. I was like, oh man, 
<laughs> there was one night too. Somebody ordered it back to back, and I was like, "Nah, you can do one." Because yeah. I don't want to fill up sixteen little glasses. It's great though. I yeah. like it. It's a nice little like funny thing. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. but I yeah. know it's <laughs> flights suck. I hate, I hate filling flights. For sure, but yeah. So I had just gotten into the craft beer industry, um, and I would come over and learn about beer here, getting to know Austin too. So. Um, I remember sitting in the tap room many a day, um, hanging out and stuff like that. So um, we have a, a long term history with with Nero, So oh yeah. yeah, it's great when your like research and development or learning is just sitting and trying different styles of beer, and you're like, oh man, my life is so hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. taking notes about it. Um, I was gonna ask because since Neros has been here, you know, for seven seven years, well, or no, no, seven, seven years, sorry, eleven, uh, 11 yeah. going on eleven years now, when you bought it and took it over. What was it like kind of taking over and existing, even though it was kind of like a re-celebration and a reopening of something new? How was that received? Was it uh, difficult? Yeah, it was. And honestly, if I could go back in time, I would have done it differently. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I didn't, we did no media. We did no, we tried to keep everything the same in okay. the beginning. Because um, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I like, I, I had never, I mean, I'd run a fishing business, but it's like, wildly different yeah and so i didn't want to like show up and be like we're changing everything oh, okay and so it was a slow evolution but um you know everyone was doing the thing that they've always done and the way they've always done it and so some people were less receptive to that change gotcha and i tried to slowly change things over time and but yeah there's now we're like really starting to tell people that I own the brewery. Mm-hmm. Like we have, we've we've been slow about that, and mm-hmm. I think I think it would have been more beneficial if we just right off the bat it was like new ownership, gotcha, new beers. We're changing a ton of stuff. Come check us out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've run into issues with with beer buyers and bars and stuff, and they're like, "Yeah, I've had your beer." I'm like, "Well, have you had it in the past three years?" And they're like, "No." I'm like, "Well." Try yeah. it now. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, I wish we had just been like, here we are. Yeah. yeah That's definitely. part of the system, too, though, is what people can get stuck in ways or old ideologies being like, oh, I had this beer and it was, you know, I didn't like it back then. So I'm never going to try it again. It's like, I've had shitty sandwiches, but it doesn't mean <laughs> that, like, when I go to a different place or even the same place, but it's changed, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm not going to eat there. It's like, oh, I'll give it a shot again, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but you know, I mean, on the on the flip side, there's there's ten thousand breweries. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, wow, you know, wow. you can't try them all. You can't. So yeah. if you have a bad experience and you write a place off, I I wish they would give us another shot. But I totally understand why they don't because mm-hmm. there's you know ten options yeah. within ten miles of here. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's it's highly highly competitive, and you know, I think the the thing that we really strive for is creating a great experience for the people that come in and. And know that our beer is going to taste good on the shelf. And yeah. we recently tried a nine-month-old IPA that we made mm-hmm. that we were we actually found on the shelf at a at a bottle shop. And I was like, oh, we got to get this oh, nice. off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And not to brag, but it tasted pretty good. No, that's <laughs> I was really like that's shocked. Yeah, I, that's always a nice surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's I say congrats to that. Yeah. I used to do that. I mean, from Seven Seas to Free, I, I would go. Look at bottles. I go like look at can dates, and sometimes yeah. yeah, even like. Freem, we had an old Freem Pilsner, and it was um, it was like six months old, I think. Yeah. It was a little oxidized, but still, I was like, oh, it doesn't taste too bad. It doesn't taste too bad. Yeah, um, yeah, we're like, okay, cool, nice. Yeah. Their their practices are still keeping up. Yeah, yeah, for sure, that's pretty awesome that you could go find that. And be yeah. like, oh, we're just gonna take this, but then try it, and it's good. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. So for like, um, like you said, you like to source kind of locally as much as you can. What what it is the Um, ingredient process look like for you of like how you decide where you buy your ingredients from um we are working with a lot of farms in yakima for hops um it there's cost savings with that and when you cut out the middleman you can you get a better relationship like we work with roy farms and cornerstone ranches uh, a lot and they're both great hop growers Mm -hmm. and they take care of the plants they 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 spend all year focusing on that mm-hmm. and they'll tell you what what they actually think about what lots and and so you can get a higher quality product um, or ingredient uh, if you're spending time with them mm-hmm. and so I really enjoy that 
we also do work with the big hot brokers too because because at some point you have to yeah you need yeah. yeah there's some scale stuff there and they, they're able to supply like cascade at a, at a much cheaper price mm -hmm. and so we'll we'll work with them too um and they're great we we really like hopsteiner uh so we do that and then um for malt we're we're buying through prairie malt we get their prairie pilsner as our base oh, nice. malt and in bulk and mike brady uh is like a good friend of mine now and he just like walked into the back of the house and started selling me on malt and i was like sure we'll try it <laughs> yeah. whatever we ended up hanging out and having beers and yeah we're yeah. we're buds right. it's cool good sales <laughs> pitch yeah yeah, yeah. Like sold some made a new friend yeah exactly <laughs> Is that personal connection important to you to some of the people that you buy from? Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, I, I like I, I like to think of myself as somewhat of a shrewd business person, but also you do you do work with people you like, mm -hmm. and and you'll you know I mean on bulk malt it's like can we save a tenth of a penny, but I got to work with someone I don't like. Yeah, I'd rather pay the tenth of a penny mm -hmm. more. Yeah, um, sure. And I think that their Pilsner malt is the best American grown, American malted, I think it's actually Canadian, but whatever, mm -hmm. um, American, North American malted and uh, on the market, that's, we've done a bunch of trials with different ones and that has stood out to be the best. Nice. And you can't get silo fills of Byron. Yeah, so, true. Which yeah. that is, I think the best, but, <laughs> but we can't afford to do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you, uh, is, is that Pilsner malt in uh, any of the beers that are on tap right now that you have going on? It's the base malt for all of our beers. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Nice. We made that switch. Um, <clears throat> we were using RAR two row and we contracted that for like three years. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sure plenty of brewers will disagree, but I'm of the belief that Pilsner malt is a better starting point than two row. Yeah. It just has a little more flavor mm -hmm. and and you can always, you know, if you're making a hazy IPA, you can always add more high protein. And, and you can make a hazy beer with Pilsner base malt. Yeah. But for our West Coast IPAs, we were already buying bags of Pilsner malt to do that. And it just it just made sense. Yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely. And I think it does work better for, for IPAs and beer. We did that a lot at Elsewhere. Um, and my old mentor, Josh, used to be at Bridgeport and then did a bunch of breweries across the states before he landed in Georgia. Um, but yeah, he was like, uh, I don't think uh, like car a crystal malt should be anywhere near an IPA. And yeah, he also was like, I don't do like a quarter bag or 5.7 pounds. He's like, it's a half bag or a full bag. That's what we do. And it was always all North Carolina uh, Pilsner malt from yeah. their malt house. And it was awesome. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure like figuring out being in the brewery for a few years and being able to do all those tweaks and changes, like you said, over time and um, it, we were here just the other day and really like we can tell the difference in the beer from when we've been here in the last few years too and um, honestly just have really enjoyed being able to to sit on in the tap room or outside and drink some really good beer and see the views and stuff like that so um, it's been really cool to see the the transition and um, progress that you've made in the changes so um, congrats on that. So Thank you. It's really good yeah. beer. We're like, it shows. makes me very happy. It shows everybody's out there having a good time. Yeah, we're like, okay, we just need to bring some more friends here and like have them retry it because it, you know, has been here for a while. So like being able, like you said, give it another shot, I think is a, a huge thing. We've seen, you know, the changes in the marketing as well, like the can art and different things. Um, and then even the tap room looks a little bit different. Um, yeah. yeah. So. Not saying the old marketing was bad, but yeah. I think things now move so fast and can get outdated. And so I think you just need to freshen up, and all of it's great. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it great. totally. Yeah, that was that was like goal number one. And I, marketing is not something I know anything about, but mm -hmm. it took forever. Mm -hmm. It was like a two and a half year process. Oh of wow! Getting the can art figured out and the like, all the logos and make sure everything looks right. Mm -hmm. That was a big headache. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it it was worth it. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, it shows. Yeah. It shows. I love all the. I'll have to take. I'll take pictures of it and stuff for the for the Instagrams and stuff like that. But all the um, artwork and things like I love just everything looks so cool. And we all have different spaces for events, which is really cool. And the deck outside, you can. We definitely saw some whales last time we were here. Nice. Oh yeah. Yeah, they weren't doing much, but you could see their little tails and or fins. Yeah, go follow the whale watching group, yeah. and then come to Narrows, drink beer, and watch the whales Honestly, go through. Honestly, I'm like, this out. is like the best spot to sit and watch. 
and yeah. have a beer. We're very sure. lucky to have this location. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of a kind. Yeah. Do you know if they're going to do anything else around this area? Because I know they're building some stuff over there that's maybe going to drive more foot traffic or try to make it more of a, a destination point to go? Because I know the beach is just right over there. Yeah. There's, I mean, I know there's been like long term hopes of putting in apartment complexes down here. Uh -huh. But I, I don't know that that's ever going to happen. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, for anyone who hasn't been here, we are on the water across the train tracks, and our taproom manager always says we're a destinationless destination. <laughs> and, does that seem fitting? Yeah, it does. There's, there's, I mean, you know, there's a restaurant next door, and it's owned by Anthony's Chain, and it's, it's great, um, mm -hmm. but that's it. You know, you come, or I guess if you store your boat down here. Yeah. That's yeah. the only reason you'd come. Or for the view. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. the beer, obviously. <laughs> the beer, yeah. the view, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> that seems like a destination to me. Yeah. No, that's got to be that's got to be a hard point to know you have this cool, good spot, and it is kind of like in this industrial area, and then also just right, like, probably a quarter mile away is the beach where there's a park and there's a ton of people, and it's like, oh, if people just know to walk just five minutes, yeah. you can come and sit and have a pint or two on a hot day. Yeah, yeah. Do you it, have people come, like, grab beers to go to go to the beach over here? Um, I'm sure they do. We don't. We don't ask. To, yeah, yeah, we don't. We don't ask where yeah. they're going. With they it. get out on their kayak. <laughs> yeah, with binoculars. Well, that's what I said. I was like, y'all should get a jet ski that like delivers to the beach or something like <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, like like I thought, service. I was like, that'd be so cool if they just like, hey, can we get a six pack over here? Yeah. <laughs> Almost like an right ice there. cream truck, but for adults. At the exactly. Beach. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. 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 I don't know if the beach you can have. I think there's there. some, yeah, yeah, I think there's <laughs> I some like, open container know. laws yeah. there, but. If Tacoma PD listens, we're not doing <laughs> We're not doing that. Don't worry, we won't do no, it. No, no, no. Yeah. I just I, thought that was a cool idea. Yeah. We have a, our, our West Coast IPA is called Super Chicken, um, mm -hmm. and it's named after a jet ski, which is like an old Kawasaki. <laughs> oh, I never knew that. <laughs> yeah, it's, if you look at the can, there's a picture of a Super Chicken on it. which oh, is all right. Which is an old. You side by side, side jet ski, so it's like a That's it's wild. a couch with a jet, basically. That's no. hilarious. And there's uh, you can find them that are and then have to refurbish them or whatever. But I I have this dream of of getting one and then like delivering a keg to the Tides Tavern <laughs> oh, on yes. the yes. Super Chicken. You should. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I and then just that. like hang it somewhere or put it as a as yeah. a piece in the yeah as like a me tavern. memorial. Yeah, yeah, Heck yeah. I yeah. like that. Yeah, that's what, so cool. Uh, what do your parents think so far of the success and how what you've done with Narrows? Have they given input, especially because they were yeah. I think, previous owners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I talk to my dad daily. He is uh, so supportive, and like, he wanted me to go work for him at his company, mm -hmm. and it just wasn't going to be a good fit. Mm -hmm. And he, and so now he's like my number one advisor. I call him, yeah, every day. And I'm like, how do how would you do this? Like, what do you think about that? And his role when when he was a partner in the brewery was like he just he just put some money into it. He was not like he doesn't know anything about beer, but he does know about running a business. Mm -hmm. And so he's both my mom and dad and my grandma are very, very supportive. Nice. That's awesome. Good. That's cool. It's it's cool to have that family relationship. Oh yeah. And do they do they still come down here now and enjoy? Do they do on Maybe occasion? Not, on occasion, yeah, they're pretty hermity. They don't really get out. They That's like okay. to hang out with themselves. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, we understand. Yeah. That's wild. I'm sure it was helpful too to have Mary still be here because she's been here, you know, forever. Knows the tap room and the things. So I'm sure that was helpful on that side to totally to. To move forward because I think tap room management can be very difficult. Yeah, maybe take some stress or stuff off your plate. Totally. Yeah, Mary is a lifesaver. Mm. Um, we, I don't have to worry about it too much, mm. and she just handles it. And mm. she has so much experience in running bars that I will never have. Mm. And so having having an expert that's on our side and like all in mm -hmm. is is awesome. You know, like right now, I think I, all of our employees are all in and love what we're doing and excited nice. about everything. And like, you know, as a, as a business owner and boss, like that's exactly what mm -hmm. you want. You mm -hmm. want, you want everyone to enjoy every day at work and also bust their ass for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. yeah. And, Definitely. and then there's, you know, there's perks of working at a brewery, yeah. right? Oh Free yeah. Free beer. Yeah. yeah. We don't, yeah. Creativity. We're, yeah. <laughs> We're not, um, we, we're no strangers to those. We know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, for a long time, that's what's probably been keeping people at breweries yeah. is 
some of the camaraderie and community oh, yeah. and the free beer to share with people. So yeah, for sure. And I mean, like, who doesn't like saying, "I work at a brewery"? Yeah, right? true. Like, that's a cool. That's a cool thing. To yeah. Say. I've only worked at. Well, I guess I've worked at two breweries, but just in the tap room. But ever, we've since we've lived in the van, he's always been like brewing, and I've been like in the parking lot working corporate. Like, um, and so oh, I'm yeah. always like, yeah, when we were at so and so, like when we were working at this brewery, and I'm like, actually. I didn't work at the brewery, but I was inside the brewery almost every single day. <laughs> <laughs> working. <laughs> working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it felt like, like I worked there, and I, like, knew everyone on the team and stuff like that. So for sure. That's a big reason why we enjoy and wanted to do this podcast was because of the community and the people, not only in the individual beer uh, breweries themselves, like the teams that he's been a part of and I've seen him be a part of, but also just, like, the community within the craft beer industry um, so are there like breweries or people close by that you reach out to or some of your um, old coworkers that you reach out to is for support or if you need stuff? Because there's, you know, mm -hmm. you are a little bit set aside here. So. Yeah, we I mean, so Mary's daughter is married to Jeff, who's the head brewer at SIG. Mm -hmm. So Jeff and I talk on occasion and we were a, a little bigger than them. So he comes by to like grab a sleeve of cannons and mm. like stuff oh, like yeah. that on occasion, which is great. Um, and then I made some really good friends in brewing school that are all over the world. Mm. Um, and so we keep in touch and I always call them for like major questions. And then the guys at lowercase are yeah. mentors and amazing people. Yeah. And they're doing this Douglas brand now too. Okay. Um, and that's, Oh, I think I saw it. It's like Douglas lager. Or whatnot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They've, they have the old, uh, fish bottling line oh, um, in the basement awesome. of seven seas. And it is, it, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I've heard it. I've, or I've heard of it. I've not seen it, but yeah, yeah Chris, Chris was like, I don't know why we bought this thing. And I was like, dude, I'm not there. <laughs> yeah. It, well, give us a little more then. Cause now I want to know. Oh, um, it's yeah. Um, is it just like old and beat up or. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's from the sixties maybe. Okay. It's old. Um, but it's like a piece of brewing history. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I think Olympia bottles were run on it. Okay. Um, and when fish went under the, it went into receivership and, um, Long story short, I I was maybe going to partner with them and do something with a lager brand, and I just decided against it. But okay. we went down and toured the fish plant, and it was like the la the last run on that bottling line, and so loud, so chaotic. <laughs> it felt like a like <laughs> like you were in Willy Wonka's like chocolate factory or something. Like everything was going everywhere. Yeah, like burps and whistles, and yeah, it was wild. Um, wet glue labeler. Oh like, yeah to quote Chris, like, you don't realize how much technology a sticker is. Mm -hmm. And wet glue labor. Oh, wait. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. So it's like a piece of paper and then they put on wet I'm going to explain it poorly, but yeah, yeah, they like, they glue the label on instead of the adhesive being sticker. on the label, yeah. like a sticker. It's, yeah. I've done some canning, canning runs and this, the labels are hard even with just the stickers. So I can only <laughs> imagine. Yeah. Without a sticker. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think they got it for free too. So Good. they just had to move it. No, that, yeah, that's the other problem too is space. Yeah, 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 and it's nice that you guys have such a big space here mm -hmm. too. You don't have to worry about maybe if you were to expand like tank height because you yeah. guys can go pretty far up. Although I do know the you can describe it to them, but it's an old boat warehouse, so maybe you can't throw a bundle weight bundle yeah. weight. Yeah, we're actually tomorrow. I'm driving down to pick up another tank, but we're, oh, okay, congrats. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, but we're kind of getting there. Uh, on tank space, mm -hmm. um, we just got a new depal, so we can we can move our canning line, which opens up more floor space. But oh, nice. the floor each each tank spot can handle about thirty barrels of beer, mm -hmm. and because we're on the second floor, there's like a cellar below us, and um, in order to put heavier tanks in, we would have to rework all the floor, and it would mm -hmm. be that's a huge project, yeah, and a lot of money, yeah, totally. Yeah. So. Um, we're actually looking at finding a new location for our production. Oh, okay. As we keep growing, because we're kind of max out our space pretty soon. Well, congrats yeah, for maxing this out first. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I think a lot of, I've watched, I shouldn't say I think, I've watched a lot of breweries kind of over project their growth and buy bigger spaces and tons of tanks. And then the tanks sit, sit empty and things slow down. And it's always just a sad thing to see, because then that is how a lot of, places go under is just like oh man have to somehow get rid of all this debt yeah totally um we're we're trying to be as intelligent about it as we can mm -hmm. and 
and realistic, you know? Yeah. Like we have big aspirations, but um, that that's a 30 year time horizon, not a two year time horizon. Yeah. So. Oh, for sure. And it used to be, I mean like mm -hmm. 2015, I would say even till COVID yeah. people, you watch, I mean, we watch modern times go from like one place to like seven places mm -hmm. and just explode. And now it kind of all so shrunk exciting. back down to, mm -hmm back to their home state. So yeah. I think that's smart on you. Yeah. What is your, um, what'd you guys do this year for barrelage or last year, I guess, what was last, your cap out? Last year we did like 3000 barrels. Oh, nice. Um, we're expecting to do about 4,500 this year. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That so is awesome. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it, you know, it's exciting. Yeah. Things are going in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Exciting. Um, stressful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anxious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all these things. Yeah. I can't sleep very well anymore, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So, Tell me a little bit about your strategy for what beers you're going to make. Or, like, I know that you're doing some, like, hot variety things on everything. So what is some of that strategy for you um, for whenever you're preparing your beer list? Well, so or we – new beers. Yeah, we, we bought a three-barrel, like, R&D system. And so AJ, who is our production manager, R&D brewer, he, he just kind of gets to run wild with it, which is fun to see. He, he made a – West Coast Pilsner, like before, I'm not claiming that we invented it or anything, but mm -hmm. like before we that like hit the market, he was like, I'm going to dry hop this lager with something. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so he just has total freedom to make whatever he wants. And, and those are mainly what's on draft here. Mm -hmm. Our production is our flagships. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll brew a 30 barrel batch of a, of like an Italian Pilsner for our 16 ounce can release or something. But, um, most of what we're making is Octo IPA, Tempest, Hazy, Highway 16, Blonde, it's a Blonde Lager, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and a Porter and an Amber. Yeah. So like, I see like, uh, five, six, like six flagship beers. Yeah. Awesome. And, and those are all in 12 ounce cans and we're working on growing those brands. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, for, for the tap room, we get to make really fun, mm -hmm. expensive beers. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it's like this will this will be fun to drink and might make some money on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you, when you're selling it over your own bar, you can you can get away with a lot more. Mm -hmm. True. Um, True. Yeah. What's so. have you been able to have fun on the R and D system? Has there been something that you've been stoked that you've brewed on there? Yeah. Well, so we we we've tweaked our Highway 16 recipe some to make it more of a lager, and about a year ago. Uh, these like guys in Tacoma wanted wanted me to brew a beer for their cornhole tournament, mm -hmm. and one of our bartenders uh, mocked up this label. Um, my middle initial is Dean, so mm -hmm. P D R, and he mocked up this label that looked like a PBR can. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome! And they were like, "You guys, you got to make it." So I, I brewed that on our on our three barrel, um, and that was super exciting. It turned out great. It was you know a light lager, yeah. but uh -huh. had like this nice floral hop aroma that you don't get in a normal light lager mm -hmm. and just total elbow bender you know oh, like perfect awesome. for a cornhole tournament <laughs> that's yeah. awesome yeah like, yeah do you have a, one of those cans saved for yourself to be like kind of immortalized yeah it's on my like liquor shelf at home nice. <laughs> it's, it's yeah it's front and center that's awesome. but we never sold it so we didn't it was just a joke okay you know? we weren't um yeah. infringing on copyright or anything yeah like that don't come after them there must be <laughs> yeah we didn't sell it so yeah. there's no damages you can get yeah, yeah. <laughs> i like that that's wild is there anything um like new beers that you're like something that you're thinking about you want to try on the the R and D system or Yeah, we're so I'm getting married in September and Oh congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh and so for our wedding I'm gonna brew a I'm a lager guy, but a Hellas lager mm -hmm. with like a blend of three different malts. Um and I'm, yeah, I'm super excited about that's that beer. Cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite ingredient? I think to like tweak and craft with. Is it malt, hops, yeast? Um, I would say you can say water profiles too, but yeah. To me, throwing salts and stuff in there isn't like that exciting. It's not exciting. It's uh, fascinating. It is. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, I think a pill like seeing the difference in pilsner malts mm -hmm. is so fun. Mm -hmm. And like best malt is this super grapey like Welch's grape juice. Um, you get that aroma off of it. Mm -hmm. Best pills. Environment is way more honey, bready, and then prairie pills is is just a little more toned down. And mm -hmm. so like playing with those is really exciting. We're gonna get some mecha grade pilsner malt soon. Oh and nice. I'm excited to use that and just see 
it's just fun to see how it expresses itself differently. Yeah, especially when you have things so consistently down too, it's like you can really see the clear distinction that it'll give it to like, oh, okay, that's the difference between that and this. Yeah, yeah. And then like, you know, we we just did a uh, like a West Coast IPA with, with some Maris Otter mm -hmm. and extract was way lower. And we're like, oh, that makes sense. They, yeah. And then look at the COA and we're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. No, definitely, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. If there was something that you were going to tell your younger <laughs> self, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, what would it be? Go for it sooner. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I was fairly young. I was. I was 27 when I bought the brewery. Mm -hmm. And, but I, I knew at 18, I really wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. And I could have gone and gotten an education, like a four-year education in chemistry and fermentation science and like really been an expert mm -hmm. by the time I was 22. Mm -hmm. And... But I was like, you know, there's self-doubt and concern and, you know, you get a normal job, go yeah. whatever. And, yeah. and like just having the confidence to be like, no, this is what I want to do and sticking to it. Um, yeah, that would have been yeah. what I told myself. <laughs> That's really good. We, we love asking that question. We've asked it for years since we've been traveling and stuff like that. So it's always cool to hear Hear what people say, so I like that. I haven't heard something like that. Yeah, what's uh, if you still have it? Because I know I'm I talk about this, I'm pretty open. Um, plenty of you know, like kind of mental health struggles that happen, I think, in this industry because it's so many passionate, creative, slightly psychotic, super hardworking individuals that really pull what I feel like everything they can. What do you have? Um, do you have like support system or like what do you use, I guess, to kind of keep yourself more in a positive light than opposed to sometimes just being like oh, man, this is going to be like a hard slog. Like, this is going to suck. Yeah. Um, I get out a lot. I Like, out into nature. Um, we're big skiers. Oh, and, nice. And, like, specifically backcountry skiing is, like, my favorite thing to do. And so you all winter, because the brewing industry is so, summer's great, winter's hard, mm -hmm. and that's when, like, the weight of the world comes down on you. And yeah. then to, like, take Saturday and Sunday and go – up to Mount Rainier and skin up and have mm -hmm. a nice lunch and ski down is like that really resets yeah. for me and that's a big big part of my life and mental health yeah. Good. having hobbies outside of the work yeah yeah. That's, that's smart. yeah yeah you can really get into a situation where you realize you're out at bars drinking beer and you're like saying it's for work and and you're like well I should yeah. I should maybe hop on the treadmill and like <laughs> yeah. do something Get some else. Get other endorphins yeah. and dopamine. Yeah. yeah. And probably the best way to describe it too, it's like obsessive. I think brewers can get like obsessed and then, yeah, yeah there's a point where I feel like it, it leans into that darkness of being like, you can take a break and you go out, go out to Point Defiance or go to a forest park mm. and sometimes just sit. Mm. Yeah. If you're going to drink a beer, sometimes just go sit outside and drink a beer. Mm. Totally. Yeah. 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 Awesome. And definitely he's always just like, you know, being a brewer, you have to keep yourself but because you couldn't really hurt yourself because it is such a physical job and yes. ailments and different things. So um, being Turning 32 this year and it's like my body feels broken <laughs> down and it's like this is what every other brewer I think feels like. So I'm yeah. trying to keep it spry. Yeah. Always like doing yoga and getting out, like you said, skiing and stuff like that. We like to hike. So yeah. Yeah, getting outside is always is a good thing for sure so yeah and we live in such a beautiful, beautiful. place oh my gosh, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's honestly like it's shame on you if you don't i know yeah i know yeah i love love getting out yeah. into nature beautiful. um how big is your uh, brew team uh we have oh man <laughs> aj zach jillian ben four uh full-time brewers nice. and then i sub in mm -hmm. you know gotcha um, as you direct and kind of run the show yeah, there's unfortunately a lot of computer work that goes along, <laughs> <laughs> along with this. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to be better about it. I recently learned how to use Excel, so oh, nice. I'm nice. proud of myself. I'm, yeah. I'm right there with you, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lifesaver. X lookups. I yeah. just learned what that was. They're crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. After sure. this, if you need some tips and tricks, that's all she did for like Yahoo and CarMax was yeah. work with those systems. Yeah. Nice. Uh, project management, you know. Yeah, yeah. Got to keep things organized for sure. And I hope it's not prime, but do you know the longevity of how long uh, these these four people have been with Narrows Brewing? Are some of them fresher, or some of them been here for a while? Yeah, I, Zach's been here since the beginning. Um, oh, okay. Uh, he, yeah, he started right after they opened, and Zach is like the most dependable 
workhorse in the world. It's great. Oh, yeah. um, and then Ben's been here for two years. He started right after he turned 21. Okay. And AJ's been here for three. He, I hired him a year after I bought the business. So oh, okay, well, gotcha. Coming up on three years. Nice. Um, him and I worked at Lowercase together. Oh, okay. okay. I was going to ask where he came before. Okay. Yeah, he was at Lowercase and then uh, Elysian and Ten Barrel. Okay. And oh, then, nice. And then left Ten Barrel to come here. Very nice. Cool. Yeah, wow. so he's got like big hey, good, production good experience yeah. and like has problem solved in ways that I never have yeah. and don't yeah, even understand. Yeah, just different experiences. Yeah. yeah, just different experiences. Yeah, and then Jillian has been here for like nine months. Yeah. Um, okay. She runs, she brews and runs our canning line and I was the can line operator, but it's hard when I leave for fishing every yeah. summer. So we needed <laughs> yeah. someone that could Do the step line. in, and she's killing it. Yeah. Nice. I think she was at um, Steeplejack after you left. Yeah, oh, she did okay. pink, the Pink Boots Society. Oh, she she, she came a- okay. after we had left because um, Mary had talked to us about it. I was like, I think it was after we left. But yeah. yeah, yeah, she was at Steeplejack, and then I think a short stint at Headless Mumby, and then came here. Very oh, cool. interesting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good crew. Yeah, yeah, it's they're all great. It's yeah. fun to work with them. Yeah, very nice. Anything fun, exciting for this summer um, that you are planning on doing, like any events or releases or? Um, yeah, where summer seasonal is a thialized peach blonde ale, I guess. Oh, nice! And it sounds like kind of a funky beer, but uh, it's just like super easy drinking. Um, we just put it on tap. It's it's like the perfect summer beer. Nice. Uh, so that one's exciting. And and then for our anniversary, we do Queen Octo every year, mm-hmm. which there's a little bit of a trend here, thialized uh, hazy IPA. Um, oh, yeah. And that's a fairly new product. Uh, I think that just came out like within the past year. I'm not sure. I'm probably wrong on that timeline. Yeah, I think I think we've, we've been buying that yeast from uh, Omega for a year and a half, maybe. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, okay. So I am wrong, but... So I mean, it's a yeast. It's, yeah. Sorry, yeah. For, I didn't know what it was. Yeah, it's a it's it's a like CRISPR technology yeast. So they like insert this uh, this gene from wine yeast that changes the compounds of thiols that that are native in barley mm-hmm. um, and create like these super nice tropical fruit aromas. Very so cool. I'll have to give our, it a try. Yeah, or like. House Hazy IPA is made with that yeast. Oh, okay. nice. And it's obviously performing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't, uh, It we can't take it as many generations as like Chico or mm. Lager or 3470 or something. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, it's it's great. Yeah. It's a uh, London Ale 3 is the base and then they tweak it from there. Gotcha. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. I've never heard of that. Well, yeah, cool. any cool. so you'll have your eleventh, um, your eleven year anniversary. Congratulations! Yeah. I think we're gonna do that in the end of July. Gotcha. So if you guys are around, come on. Yeah. Down. We Perfect time. Probably won't be. No. Okay. But um, we have some. We'll be in Texas. The heat yeah. of Texas. Texas, Texas, oh. and Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's a whole other. Yeah, thing. her family is all out there, but it was funny because as we're gonna do this like podcast road yeah. trip. We're like, we're going to try and, like, skip the heat. And then her brother's getting married, and we're doing podcasts in, like, Lubbock and Amarillo and things like that. It's like, oh, we're going to be right in the middle of it. We're going to be in the middle of it. But we'll be around family and friends, so we'll sit in the AC with them. (laughs) Nice. Yeah, yeah. That'll be good. So we're doing, yeah, we're doing, finishing up a few podcasts here in the um, Northwest um, for the rest of the month. And then we'll be heading south um, for the summer, and then we'll hit, hit the east for fall. So, Cool. The, the podcasting will will venture across the U.S. Nice. Um, so, yeah. Um, we're really excited for that. Um, so for, like, the areas that you can rent, do y'all – I mean, I know that y'all do trivia. Um, Mary's telling us y'all have big trivia nights. But I know, like, are these rooms normally always booked for – every time I've come in, I feel like they're always booked for parties and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's a big part of our tap room business mm-hmm. um, is, is getting – people to come in um we charge people to to like have an event in Mm -hmm. the in the space but it it really brings in people that wouldn't probably come to the brewery and Mm -hmm. so we for our tap room we offer obviously beer that we make and then we have cider wine and and we're like um intentional about what wine we bring in and so it's fun to have like these really high-end products that maybe you know, someone comes in doesn't want beer, but mm-hmm. they are they're not they're not getting 
some shitty wine. Yeah. yeah. And like, they're not happens, feeling like they're yeah. punished because they don't like beer. Yeah. Oh, that's um, nice. That's I like smart. the way to look that up. Yeah. So, and you know, we, we make craft beer, we make high end beer, but it wouldn't make sense to me to serve low end other products. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so that, yeah, our wine program is actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Nice. And yeah. I get to try them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, any like natural wines or things like that that you guys mm -hmm. didn't know? I assume not, especially if it comes out of a tap. That no. would be, uh, that would stink. No, I think, I think we really just have Bottles. maybe one tap of wine now. Oh, okay. But we, we've moved away from draft wine because on occasion you can get a really nice product in there. But mm -hmm. for the most part, uh, wineries are putting their high end stuff in yeah, bottles. bottles. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, well, we've I've always enjoyed coming and seeing the different um, parties and things that are going on here. So yeah, always a good time. Yeah, always. yeah I think Tuesday we had a book club thing oh, nice. here. <laughs> oh, sweet! There was like fifty or sixty people all here to talk about a book and drink wine and beer, and it was yeah. oh, that's it's awesome. Cool. It's fun. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah give, we had, giving exposure. We had the charcuterie board. And yeah, it was incredible. Oh, nice. Yeah, good. Oh my yeah. gosh, I was like, I've been to breweries that, and like wineries too that have little charcuterie things, whatever. And it's like, you know, it's kind of minuscule. It's like, uh, and I'm like, this was like amazing presentation. And then yeah. all the food, we had the little chocolate that has narrows. Yeah. I was, we thought it was like a tag. And Mary was like, no, that's chocolate. And it was so good. I was like, this yeah. is very cool. Yeah. Well, it goes along with your ethos of like the products that you give, yeah. not just for the beer, now not just for the wine. It's even for like the meats and cheese. It's just like, oh, yeah, it's not just like every day. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, we do have the snack mix and it's like Cheetos and a bunch of, yeah. bunch of that, bullshit. That's but great. I, I like eat it every day. Yeah, it's, it's so great. hard not to. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's just like drinking beer. You want something that's kind of salt and stuff um, to yeah. actually make sense. But yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you guys like the charcuterie board. That's a recent um, addition. I took oh. a ton of pictures so yeah, people so be posted. can see the Seriously pictures. Seriously, come down. Sweet. It was amazing. I could. I literally. I'm glad we didn't eat before we came because mm -hmm. that black truffle goat cheese that was on it yeah. was so nice, like creamy, and also wasn't too truffly. It was lovely. And it went nice. right along with our flight of beer. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have to pour it. We did. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, it was great to just nibble on stuff and look out. And honestly, we're we're gonna bring some friends back before we go because we're like, you need to come to Narrows. Mm -hmm. it's so great. So. Yeah. Anyways, but sweet. Well, usually, I mean, now it's like the last little bit. If there's anything else that you want to throw out there, like what Nero's doing, personal projects you have going on, um, please, this is your time to share. It's been a blast. We appreciate yeah. you talking. Yeah, to us. it's been so fun. Um, we're launching a 19.2 ounce program. Oh soon. yeah, <laughs> hazy double IPA. Okay, uh, Coin Essentials. King Tide <laughs> yeah. is what we're calling it. Oh, oh like that's that. such a good name. That's Thank a great you. Name. Yeah, um, it's 9.9 percent .9 alcohol. It's it's uh, That's a big beater. one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but we're really excited about that. We're we're looking to get it like all over Western Washington and sea okay. stores and some grocery stores. So oh, you see cool. that King Tide, King Tide, King Tide. nice, yeah. That's but we're that's the first one, and then we'll be putting like Octo and Tempest and Super Chicken, most likely, okay. gotcha. in there too. So we'll have that's some exciting. variety there. Nineteen twos. That's gonna be a good time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nineteen twos. Yeah. <laughs> fun well great thank you so much parker yeah so thank great you to, both. to meet you and to hear your story and everything so and we'll, we'll be following it we're stoked to see where it goes I know. awesome when we come yeah. back we'll have to um come back we'll send you it. some beer on our road trip yeah too. we should we're we'll gonna send you we'll some send beer. you some beer mail right yeah. on right yeah. on thanks yeah. for cheers thank, thank you, you.